Hey Bonsai Society, this is David Easterbrook here. If you remember, 16 months ago, I transformed this 20-foot American hornbeam, the cultivar name is Palisades, into a bonsai. Today, I'm going to show you how to pot it up. We're actually going to put it in a bonsai pot so it will officially become a bonsai. This, this went on top over here, as you can see. And then on top of that, we had, the top was actually, because we've got a nice thick base, not too much in the way of, of taper, but that's not so important. This is a deciduous tree. They never have as much taper as conifers. And all in all, it's good material because it had very nice lower branches. It grows vertically. The branches are quite horizontal and they arc downwards in a very pleasing angle. So I think we're going to be able to make a really interesting bonsai out of this material. everyone today is the 28th of March and we're going to be working on this tree here um, recently I've been really busy I was teaching at the, our school of horticulture I just came back from a buying trip in the northern US um, I'm about to leave for North Carolina where I'll be teaching for a week and working on clients trees so spring is a really really busy time of year on top of all of that I have to repot so many trees. I have several hundred to repot. And so far, I've only got about 60 or 70 done. So um, I'll have a major job when I get back from North Carolina. Um, fortunately, most of my uh, hardy bonsai are still outside, frozen in my winter protection boxes. And they'll only thaw out about mid-April. So when I get back... I'll start working on repotting those trees. Speaking of North Carolina, this is a Carolina hornbeam. It's an indigenous tree. It grows as far from the Carolinas to here in Quebec, uh, very hardy. And today I want to show you a, a bit. It was transformed in December, 2022. Um, the tree has developed a little bit since then. You can see that the major pruning uh, scars are starting to heal over. You can see this nice scar tissue here all around. And if we scrape down here, you'll see where this dead trunk was removed. Uh, it's starting to heal in here too. It'll take a few years to heal in. Now, if we look at the branches, um, <clears throat> they have developed a little bit, but I think the first year was like a recuperation year. Uh, this year, it's really going to go to town. You can see that there's buds all along each branch here. And the fact that I'm going to repot it today into a well aer aerated and draining soil will really make this tree take off. So now I'm about to take it out of its pot. It's really pot bound in there. And I can't, usually I can turn the pot upside down, give it a good whack and the root ball will slide out of the pot. In this case, not. It's really in there solid. So I'm going to try to cut the pot with a pair of really good pruners. Hate to waste good nursery pots. They've become so expensive, but sometimes uh, one has to make a sacrifice. Now we've got the hornbeam out of its pot. The roots seem 
really healthy, you sniff them to see whether um, they stink a bit. If, if they stink, that means there's root rot going on. It's pretty good. It smells good. Here we have an interesting phenomenon. You see this white mycelium here. This is actually mycorrhiza, and these are ectomycorrhiza that we can find on beech trees and hornbeam trees also, as well as con most conifers. So that means the roots are very healthy. They're uh, helping the roots to grow. Um, the tree is just starting to bud out in spring. So at the same time, it's sending out new root hair tips. That means the tree is in its active growing period. And this is the best time to repot a tree before they bud out. And it's just starting its new growth period for the year. Normally for a first repotting, I always try to put them in an intermediate pot. This here is a Japanese training pot. And I would put it in this pot for a couple of years and then finally put it in its final bonsai pot because I don't like to remove too many roots at one time. You can see the big drainage holes, the little holes for tying it in, the little feet here so that the water will drain out, air, air will circulate. These are great pots, these bonsai training pots, and they come in every size from really tiny ones to immense training pots. Very handy to have them on hand when you're repotting bonsai. Let's get started potting this tree. Now there's a definite order when you're repotting a tree. You always start by uh, removing the upper soil level. Often it's very crusted, it's too compacted, and if you've used organic fertilizer it's caked on the top. So you want to reveal those surface roots. Once you get to the real nabari of the tree where the surface roots join the trunk, then we can decide how we're going to cut down this root ball. But it's always important to start by the top, then the next step would be the bottom, and then you open up the sides. So we're going to get started. Usually I like to use a chopstick because wooden chopsticks are easy on the roots. If you scrape a root with a wooden chopstick, um, you're not going to bruise it or rip it too much. But this tree has been in this soil here for about, I think, 27 years, I was told by the nurseryman. So it's very compacted. This tree has grown very well in this nice, rich soil. But once it goes into a bonsai pot, the growing conditions will be changed and um, it won't drain as well. So usually when I'm potting up a tree that's either field grown or collected or a nursery tree, I generally remove all of the soil completely and sometimes even wash the roots, which I won't do with this one because I don't want to remove its ectomycorrhiza. And then I pot it up in a nice fast draining bonsai soil. So I'm going to be removing a lot of roots as gently as possible. I'm removing the surface soil that has hardened. It's gotten very hard and um, we have to find the nabari, which are the original roots around the trunk. Sometimes they can be quite low down because these nurserymen, uh, when they repot them, they just slide them into deeper pots and put some more soil on the top. So sometimes you really have to dig down quite deeply to find the original roots. So that's what I'm doing right now. It might take a little while. Well, everyone, I've uncovered a good part of the base of the tree. I'm, I'm at the level of Nabari. There's roots all around here. Um, we've actually uncovered a good one and a half, two inches here at the base of the tree. Um, it's been hard slog to get all this old compacted soil off. The nice thing about American hornbeams is that they have nice shallow root systems. So there's a lot of feeder roots near the top. And I am just going to saw off about half of this root ball so I can get at the roots from underneath. Don't forget that I removed about 17 feet 
from the top of this tree. So I don't need that many roots to feed what I have left. So I'm going to put the tree on its side and start sawing. Seems like I'm removing a big tap root here. It would help if my saw was a bit sharper. I've been sawing too many root balls with it. It dulls the saw. Here we are folks, 24 hours later. Yesterday when I tried cutting through with my Gombe saw, the blade was too dull. So I changed saws and it took over half an hour to cut through this root ball. My son actually did most of the work. They don't call it American horn beam for nothing. Horn in Old English means hard. Beam means tree. So it means a hard tree. And it is the hardest wood in the world. It is so hard that they used to make mallet heads, tool handles, yokes for oxen and cattle. That's how hard this wood is. And so it took us well over half an hour to cut through it. And now you can see the results. All right, here, the, the taproot was huge. You can see how it just is like a star going through the root ball. Here we have another huge root here. Um, and it was very difficult to saw through that. So we've effectively sawn through half of the root ball. Now I'm going to have to open this up as much as possible. Get some pie-shaped wedges. I don't want to remove all the soil, but I have to introduce some um, new bonsai soil so that the roots can breathe again. So I'm going to make some pie-shaped wedges if I can. So we'll remove this, put it on the ground. That's real hard wood removing some of the bottom soil. Now I'll never be able to get rid of all this old wood. So we have to, have to open up the soil ball in between these big roots. Hopefully with time, they'll rot away. The soil is a little bit less hard at the bottom here, so I think I can open it up better from the bottom of the root ball rather than the top. Hard to find room for soil between these big roots. They take up almost all of the root ball. Now I'm finally going to open up some of the sides here. So this is a good solid pair of Masakuni root cutters. I bought them many years ago and they're still as good as ever. We'll cut some of these roots that are circling around so I can get closer to the trunk. Okay, now I'll be able to get, get in a little closer to the trunk, make some pie-shaped wedges. As you could see, all that wood underneath was, were the original roots. So <laughs> they're gone now. So what I'm trying to get at are these new feeder roots that grow, grew out from the trunk in probably the last five, six years. They're, those roots are the ones that are going to keep my tree alive. That and the fact that I'm repotting it at the right time of year. Before we go any further, I want to explain why I used a root hook rather than root rakes. Already a root hook is made of metal and it will rip some roots. 
but generally it slides between the roots and does a minimal amount of damage. When you use a root rake, either like this or this, there you're really ripping roots apart. So try to avoid using root rakes unless it's a well-established bonsai that you've been combing out the roots for many, many years, then they'll flow through it. But for a nursery tree like this, never use one of these. Now I wanna show you the bottom of the root ball where we sawed away the original tap root and show you how massive it truly is. Here you can see it, it's cut away here. It's bigger, actually bigger than my whole hand and I have big hands. And also had to uh, prune away this to get it in the pot. This is another part of the root system. Um, also had to uh, change my idea as to what pot I was going to use because it's so massive and I can't remove any more. Eventually with time, those bottom, all that bottom wood will rot away. But for now, I had to choose a deeper pot. I've chosen a really nice, um, deep blue pot goes very well with um, actually hornbeam send out these beautiful um, flowers. They're like catkins hanging down from the branches and they're golden yellow. They go very well with a deep blue pot. So I've chosen a deep blue Reho pot and you can see how deep it is. And I actually had to cut away some of the root system just to get it in here and it's going to sit right on the bottom of the pot. So um, if I put any soil right in the bottom, it, it, it'll be too high up in the pot, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to get this pot ready and we'll pot this thing up. I'm getting ready to anchor the tree in the pot. Uh, the roots are quite fine. I don't want to damage them and I don't want the wire to show. So I've actually made some bamboo stakes. I've pointed the ends here and now I'm going to drive them into the root mass. This is a common technique for anchoring trees in their pots in Japan because you don't want the, you don't want the anchor wire to show during an exhibition. So most of the trees are tied into the pots using uh, bamboo stakes. Okay, so now we're going to tie our anchoring wires on these bamboo stakes. They're too long right now, but we'll cut them back according to the size of the pot. Here we have our pot. It's a beautiful Reho pot, but even Tokonami ware containers can have defaults. Usually there's one side better than the other. They're both pretty even. I think I'll use this side here as the front. As I said, I'm not putting any soil in the bottom because already it's resting on the bottom. So now we have to see. Okay, this is my front here. So now I will shorten the bamboo stake. I might have to even saw through it. The tree has to be um, decentered in the pot. So we have to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to leave more room on this side. So I'm just going to cut a bit of this away. Good quality pots have anchoring, anchoring holes in them. So I had threaded number two or two millimeter aluminum wire through the anchoring holes. 
the wire has to be attached directly over the top of the bamboo pliers and you push down on the bamboo as you're pulling up on the aluminum wire. I prefer to use aluminum because um, it doesn't affect the root system, whereas copper wire can actually uh, <clears throat> can actually be toxic to the roots. There we go. Have to make sure the tree is nice and tight in its pot. Okay. I've got a root here touching the edge. Cut that off. All right. So we're going to put a bottom layer of a bonsai substrate or soil. Uh, for deciduous trees, I'm actually using 80% Akadama and about 70 to 80%. And the rest of it is one half pumice and one half Kiryuzuna, which is um, a mountain sand from Japan that contains quite a lot of iron. Uh, the trees really like it. It's a gravel actually. Putting in a, um, a bottom layer. This is five to six inches, the bottom layer. This will ensure good drainage. Just getting in it in under the root ball. I need a bit more here. Now you have to make sure that there's no, no vacuum, no empty spaces under there, because if there's an empty space under the roots, uh, the roots aren't, if they're not touching any soil, they'll just dry up and die. So you have to make sure the roots are in contact with soil. You want to layer your soil. Usually it's about three different layers of, of uh, substrate. The bottom layer is usually about five to six centimeters. The main layer is a medium size um, and it's about three to four millimeters. And finally the finest near the top, a little top dressing is about two millimeters in diameter, all these little particles here. And that will permit the roots to breathe, the tree to grow well. So I've got enough of the um, the coarse five to six millimeter substrate in the bottom. I like to I like to pack it in as I go along to make sure. Sometimes the if the pot is deep, the chopstick won't get right to the bottom. So I like to do it bit by bit. So here we're adding the medium size. Uh, <coughs> Soil. It's exactly the same proportions. It's just sifted to a slightly smaller diameter. So the medium, as I said, is three to four three to four millimeters in diameter. It should be about for a pot this size. Should be about the main. The majority of the soil should be about this size. And now I'm just working this in. Not forcing it too much because I don't want it to fill in the pores between the the coarse soil mix at the bottom. You just keep working it in. Your chopstick should always be at an angle and pointed towards the trunk. And you shouldn't be sh shoving it like this. You should be inserting it and turning it either back and forth or like an auger turning it around like this to work the soil in towards the trunk. As I said previously, um, what's going to keep this tree alive is all these fine feeder roots around the trunk. So we have to keep them um, nice and happy, give them a nice growing medium. 
This here is all the, the medium. There's a lot of these fine feeder roots sticking out. Um, I'm going to, eventually they can be cut off, but right now I'm going to cover them with a bit of fine. And then after they're covered, usually for the health of the tree, to help it recover, I put a thin layer of sphagnum moss on the soil surface to keep it moist until the to give the roots a chance to fill the pot up again. While I'm doing this, I want to talk to you about um, the last video I did on that crab apple. There was a comment about it saying, um, why is it necessary or it shouldn't be necessary to use bonsai soil when the tree grows quite well in black soil in nature? Um, it's not, yes, a tree can grow well in black soil and pretty well any type of soil but the difference is is that in nature um, the soil drains the water goes right down to the uh, water table below the ground and the roots don't rot in a bonsai pot we have a the shallower it is the more we have a phenomenon called perching where because there's no gravity the pot is so shallow water perches or sits on the bottom bottom of the pot and the roots rot that is why we do not use ordinary soil in a bonsai pot it's this it's the depth and the length of the bonsai pot that affects um, the drainage in our pot so we try to use a bonsai substrate that's granular in form so when the tree is watered the water will percolate very quickly through the soil and pour out the holes in the bottom. That will be replaced by fresh air. So you'll get a good exchange of air and water that you would not get with black soil. It would stay wet for many, many days and you would get root rot. So please, when you're putting trees into a bonsai pot, do not use garden soil or black soil. Use some type of, you do not have to use Japanese bonsai substrates, but do use something that keeps its texture, some type of coarse gravel like granite chips, like perlite, like pumice, like wood chips, uh, or coconut coir, or mixtures of all three of those so that your roots will breathe in a bonsai pot. So now I'm going to finish off by putting a layer of fines onto the top of this uh, pot and then we'll get it watered you don't you have to work pretty quickly otherwise as i say those those hair roots are very fine and they dry out very quickly and can cause the death of your bonsai here we go with the our finer mix this is about two millimeters same type same recipe same type of soil it's just finer and we spread it over the top, even it out. Now there should be a, a collar. You should leave a space between the pot and the soil mixture. But don't forget, when this is watered, the soil will settle also, will settle down. So I have to pack it a little bit, tamp it down, and when it's watered, it'll settle down. And then we'll get our, our collar between the soil line and the pot. You have to be careful when you're tamping down Akadama because Akadama is actually quite soft. The roots can grow into it. And if you tamp down too hard, you'll crush it and it'll turn to powder. And that is not what you want in your bonsai pot. The powder will sift between all the pores between your granules of soil and block them. And that will prevent good aeration and drainage. So you don't want to tap down too hard. I always start at the edges and work inwards. And then if there's too much, then you just finish off with a little broom. You can actually just use a paintbrush. You don't have to have these little hemp brooms from Japan. They're nice and handy, but I mean, they're not a, they're not an essential tool. Voila, so the tree is now potted and we'll get it into a um, 
We'll get it into a basin of water. The water will go right up to here, all right? Uh, you can throw in a few, maybe a capful of Super Thrive if you want, and you have to let it sit in the water up to here for about 15 or 20 minutes for the first watering because this soil is very, very dry, and it takes that amount of time before it absorbs the water. Often people think their tree is well watered. They just water it with a hose or a watering can, and I stick my finger in it to show them that underneath the surface, maybe half an inch under, it's bone dry. So be very careful. The first watering, you really have to saturate your soil mix. And I think the only way you can do it is by emerging it in a little uh, basin of water. The tree has now been soaked in a basin of water. It's about 20 minutes before I took it out. And I've covered the roots with a thin layer of sphagnum moss to keep the roots near the surface constantly moist, not wet. We just want to keep them moist. So this really um, culminates a 16 month journey from when I started off with this tree. If you're interested in following its evolution, please subscribe because occasionally I'd like to show you its progress. If you like this video, uh, please send me your likes Send me your comments, especially your comments. Do you like working with native trees? Would you like me to work with more native trees? Um, I'd really appreciate hearing from them. So please like, subscribe, and keep in touch with me. topic of nursery trees, I recently bought this really interesting cultivar of a Japanese maple. Its name is Hanami Nishiki. If you're interested in seeing me transform this tree, I'm offering you a challenge. All I'm asking for is a thousand likes so that I can start doing this. You've got the, the last video for free. I'm not asking you guys for money. I'm just asking you to send me some likes so that um, I can keep on working on these good quality trees. So again, um, send me likes, uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.